Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video, I'm going to show you how to share data between containers or multiple containers. So ideally, you shouldn't do this because containers are actually meant to run as individual application, isolated application. They are isolated environments. So ideally, you shouldn't share data between the containers, but sometimes you would have, say, two containers where one container generates some data and other container consumes that data, right? So in those cases, we tend to share data between containers and we are going to do that using Docker volumes. So let me show you how. So first, what we are going to do is we are going to create a volume. So Docker volume create, let's call it my data. So we have created a volume called my data. Let me do a Docker images. So these are the images I have. So I'm going to run a CentOS container, in fact, two CentOS containers. So let's do docker run it dit. Uh, let's say hyphen name first. And uh, yeah, that's it. And let's say CentOS docker ps. So we have one container running, right? So what I'm going to do is, and one more thing. So I didn't tell you in the last video that uh, you can mount the volume either as a read only disk or in read write mo mode as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these two containers. So one on one, I'm going to mount the volume as read write and on the other container, I'm going to mount it as read only. So you will see the difference that from one container, we'll be able to create files inside that directory and from the other container, we won't be able to do that. And all the concurrency and stuff is handled by Docker itself. So you don't need to worry about like multiple containers uh, accessing a file in the Docker volume. So you don't need to worry about that. And what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of this container, which we just ran because I forgot to mount the volume. So that was the whole point, right? So let's do Let's do what? Let's do Docker stop. Probably. Okay. So let's do Docker stop and Docker RM. All right. So now what I forgot was to run this container and mount the volume. So if you remember, we passed the volume using hyphen V. So we created my data and we are going to mount it on say slash data inside the container and i'm not passing any option over here so this volume would be mounted in the read write uh, uh, format in the container let's do so let's do docker ps you can see our container is running so now i'm going to run another container and call it second All right, and in this also, I'm going to mount the volume on slash data, but I'm going to do it in read only mode. All right, so we have two container running. You can see that. Let's go in the first container. Let's go to data directory and let's create a file so it's to vi my file and let's do this is created in container one so i'm just leaving a marker so when we read this in the second container we would know that this is coming from the first container all right, let's exit out, control D. Let's do Docker PS again, and let's go to our second container. Let's just get rid of this. Go inside this, CD into data. Let's do an LS first, and you can see my file is there. Let's cat this my file. You can see this is coming from 
container one. Now let's do a VI on my file. And you can see when I'm trying to edit it, it gave the warning that it's a read only file, right? Still, let's try that. Uh, this is second container. You can see I'm getting an error. Can't open file for writing because if you remember, we mounted this uh, volume in read only mode. So we cannot do any editing and we can only read the files in this particular volume. So this was one way of sharing the data between the container. Uh, you can even share your host volumes with container. So let me show you how we do that as well. So let's exit out of this. Let's do docker ps. Let's stop these running containers. And let's get, get rid of them as well. So cleanup is very important. So you should always clean up once you are done. And let's do docker volume delete my data. Uh, what did I know? Okay, docker volume rm, sorry, not delete, it's rm. And so we have deleted our volume as well. All right. Now let me show you how you can mount your uh, host volume onto your container. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory over here, say my container. All right. I'll go inside my container and I'll create a couple of files, say file one and touch file two. So I'm not putting any content. I just want to show how you can basically mount your host volumes onto your container. Correct. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a container. Uh, let me first do a PWD. So just want to know what is my present working directory. And now I'm going to run a container can uh, Docker run hyphen DIT hyphen V. We are good. It's, it's the same process in just in after hyphen v instead of providing a volume name what i'm going to do is basically interpolate pwd which is my root and after that it was my container so this is the volume which i want to mount on again say slash data inside the container and i want to run a centos container right so now let's do docker ps. So we have a container running. Let's go inside this docker run hyphen it. Oh, sorry, not run. Ah, sorry, guys, I'm really tired actually. Docker exec hyphen it slash bin bash. All right, so let's go inside data. And let's do an ls lrt and you can see the files which we created on our host volume are there inside our container. So this is the way basically you mount your host volumes inside the container. So yeah, this is it for this video guys. This is all I wanted to show you in this video, how you can share data between containers, how you can share data between your host and your container. So please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and yeah, thank you for watching.